you. What up? All right. Um. So, uh, we got another one from Joke World. Hmm. Okay. What we got? This is another try not to laugh from Chris Destefano. Okay. Okay. Chris, funny dude. Yes. 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 Seen him before. Checked out a couple of his uh, stand-ups. Definitely, we've seen him in the um, <clears throat> round of um, podcasts that we've been usually watching. Yeah, like um, yeah, usually with Bobby Lee and yeah, and uh, Theo. I see you seen him with Theo, right? I believe so. Right, right. And uh, Gringo Bobby, what's his name? Um. Yeah. Brendan Shaw. Yeah, Brendan. All right, man. Let's go, man. You ready? Yes. Welcome to Joke World. This is Chris Stefano. Try not to laugh. Try not to laugh. You might shit yourself, but try. I don't eat flour. I don't eat a lot of sugar anymore. Not hardly any sugar. I, I'm a food addict, so I had to give up right. foods. You right. look great. Thank you so oh, much. Oh, she looks fantastic. Yeah, oh, my God. I lost yeah. a lot of weight. I mean, you know, I used to be a house. This is the kind of thing where people <laughs> Now you're a condo. A- <laughs> <laughs> now you're a townhouse. <laughs> You're a pool house now. <laughs> now I'm a cabana. <laughs> I'm a f- mansion. Oh my God. That is the funniest thing I've heard in a long time. <laughs> well, it's tough because I, you know, I have, a, I have a young stepson, like a teenage stepson who's, you know, starting to talk to girls, you know, like whatever. Yeah, how do you navigate that? And it's tough because you don't really know how to tell him like what's okay and what's not other than I'm like, Hey, just, you know, be nice to girls, look them in the eye, you know, like say hi, like, you know, but it's like, you don't know, even, even that, I swear to God, I said to my stepson, I was like, you know, you talk to any girls? He's like, yeah, I like a couple of girls. And I was like, Oh good. I was like, do you talk to them? And he was like, yeah. I said, what do you open up with? And he was like, well, you know, like it's tough. He's like, because the one girl I like, I swear he said, he goes, the one girl I like doesn't identify as a girl. Yeah. So she's oh. a girl. I know she's a girl, but she doesn't like to be called that. So I don't know what to say. He goes, I don't know like how I'm supposed to talk to her. And I was Sup, like, freak. Well, I said, That's you know what, buddy? I said, I, you're going to have to talk to your real father about that. Yeah. <laughs> um, your stepdad. Yeah. Yeah. I can't live without putting a Q-tip in my ear. You put it in every day? If I don't have a Q-tip to put in my ear, I can't live. But how much wax are you building up each day that you have to Q-tip your ear? It's not about the wax. I, What's because the wax? Like I'm doing it every day, so there kind of is no wax buildup. It's like a, a mental... First of all, I love the feeling. My ear is itchy sometimes, so I love the feeling. And second of all, I get the water out of my ears yeah. by doing it as well. Because you know what? It's nice because we're, as men, we always two, penetrate. Two a day. It's yeah. nice to be penetrated once in a while. Yeah. You, <laughs> not, you don't have to do a full gay sex. It hole. always depends on... It depends on the hole, but penetration in some holes that are not sexually in nature can be nice. A penetration in a non-sexual hole, all day. People ask me all the time, Chris, why do you pick your nose every day? I said, because I want to be penetrated, but I'm not gay. Mm-hmm. But I still do want to feel what it's like to be inside my hole, and that's uh, what I do that. Mm-hmm. And that's what you do with the Q-tip. And that's great. Pip has something to say. Yes. Uh, Harvard Health says, do not clean your ears. They're self-cleaning. I know. I know what Harvard Health says. But well, listen, I, I tell can't Harvard help Health that I didn't know my my ears were a fucking yeah. Roomba. Yeah, that's. I was just going to say it. I, is that Roomba was. When you were done talking, I was going to say it. Oh, we should have said it right at the same time. Tell the truth. How's it doing? I want to look at the Spashy Weshy real quick. It was quick. on trending now, but I don't know if it is anymore. Chris DeStefano, the Spashy Weshy. Okay, first of all, out of the 64 votes on IMDb, 8 out of 10. Pretty fucking good. That's not bad. That, are you kidding me? That's really good. Yeah. I think You're not going to get a 10 out of 10. Well, you could. No, that's impossible. Yeah. And here's the first, and let me see the first critic review. All right, here you go. Chris Stefano's Speci Weshi is unbelievable. I came 17 times. This guy's a mega babe. Wow, what a pipe on this Tardo. It's a little more than a half hour. It's engaging and funny. And boy, oh boy, do I like to come. His other special 38 <laughs> waste also made me come. Not as much as this. In fact, the Stefano was set to release Speci Weshi on YouTube. But since no one can come as much on YouTube as they do on Netflix, he decided this is the best place to feature it. Wow. My dad. <laughs> is, that, is that Tampa Tony? It's Tampa T. I don't understand. Girl. How do you get on morning television? It's so... Chris, I was watching you on daytime television. You, Wendy Cummings, and two other women talk about female body image, and you are curled up in a ball like no one look at me or ask me any questions. Yeah. I, so what happened was with that is I got booked. I think the very first one was, was when Whitney Cummings was filling in for uh, Wendy Williams. She asked me to come on her show 
and you know be a guest and then I I had like you know I, before the show the hair and makeup guy was like you know like this really like flamboyant gay guy he's like you're gonna have so much fun you could be great let's get you gunk and then like you know I'll be like right here I'll take your makeup off we'll talk about your daughter like he was just like crazy, and we were having a good time. Incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and he was like whispering. He was so good, positive energy. And then I went out there, and I just started <laughs> swinging for the fences with jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, the way people react to you, yeah. they just look at the ground. They don't even know what to yeah. do. And the look on your face is like, am I going to get away with it? Yeah, it like, was like a, a ten o'clock in the morning. <laughs> this TV audience, so everybody else is doing like knock knock jokes, and like Michelle Buteau is up there being like, yeah, like a politician. I'm like, girl power, mm-hmm, like that. Like everyone's clapping. And then I'm just out there doing jokes about how, like, I wish Travis Barker would die in a plane crash. And then, and then, and then they're, like, and they're like, wait, what? And then, and, but they're jokes. And then just, and then I'm doing, like, Confederate, like, Civil War jokes. And they're like, what is happening? And, we, and I'm doing abortion jokes with Whitney Cummings. And they're all, like, bombing, like, so bad. But then I'm at this. And then and when I go off the set, that, like, guy who was like, yeah, Everybody left. My green room was vacant. Nobody was there. Like, no, they didn't even give me a car home. They were like, you can get on the train. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and, and I then, after that, me and Homeless Pimp, my guy, Mike Lavin, Homeless Pimp, who does all my production stuff, he was like, dude, because I was like, dude, I just bombed so hard on daytime TV. He was like, we have to get the footage. And we watched the footage, and we were on the floor, di- like, dying. <laughs> like, to the point where I almost burst my appendix from, because we were dying <laughs> laughing on how hard I was bombing. And I was like, you know what? Clip it. I was like, put all that stuff out. Because I remember that night, Michelle Buteau called me, and she was like, it's going to be OK, sweetie. Don't even worry about it. And I was like, lady, I'm not looking to be a daytime <laughs> television fucking host. I went with the intention of being a comic. So I went on, so I went on. And, and, and so I, I edited it and I put it out there and it got like a decent amount of traction. I was like, oh, Chrissy Daytimes, I'll come bomb on your show. And then I started going on all these daytime shows and just be like, I'm going to do the jokes as if this was late night. As if this was two o'clock in the morning at the Comedy Cellar, that's how I'm approaching the show. I don't know why you guys would have a man on this panel. This is the worst idea ever. <laughs> I'm going to say anything I say, the audience is going to hate me. If I was Travis Barker, Travis, where's my, if you're watching, and I know that you are, you should scan your body right now and make sure that there are no other tattoos of any other women on your body because it's not going to be cover up next time. She's going to start amputating body parts and you're going to come out to your next concert looking like a Civil War veteran. So you really need to be careful. Wait a minute. 10 years into comedy, I was like, my knees hurt from tap dancing. Take the tap shoes back. I want to sit down, relax. You call it stand up comedy, I'm going to sit down and do comedy. I'm tired, y'all. Stop asking us to do stuff, okay? Also, like. His knees hurt too, but. I love that I'm bombing on this show. <laughs> I love that because I keep forgetting it's daytime TV, not our podcast. TT Jerry's coming. I cleaned the pool this morning. The Tiger Shark 1400. What do you guys know about it? Dude, it's crazy. Oh, about yeah, it. then this is not garbage. This place is beautiful. This is but unbelievable. It's okay. It it is it is it is a beautiful place. But there's got to be something garbage in here. You. Uh, it's yeah. you. <laughs> This the fact that you bought a house not knowing anything. Yeah, uh, yeah I don't. Uh, okay, this has real like lottery winner vibes. <laughs> yes, <laughs> like you're not gonna be you're not gonna be here in three years, and someone's gonna tragically die in the pool. <laughs> I Can they repo a house? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, funny because I don't know. First of all, first of all. I I I get I, I've been getting scammed by everybody. I wow, come in here, sure. they're like, "Oh, you need you need bee spray because there was a bee back there, two hundred dollars there." Yeah, you need then, a, you need a Johnson flange or something. All that know. stuff. I go to you know the pool. I put chlorine tablets in the pool. I'm like, "We'll go with chlorine." We get the pool guy over. He goes, "No, no, no, the pH is off." So he puts chemicals in. The heater explodes. <laughs> <laughs> Man, they saw you coming across the Verizon. Yeah. And he was like, oh, and, he, and, he, and he's going to be, he's going, listen, the previous owner didn't have the right pH. He corroded the heater pipes and the valves and this and that. But long story short, it's two grand for a heater. Yeah. I can sell them directly to you. So yeah. we buy a fucking heater. Yeah, he's like, listen, I got one on a truck. Holy Just go shit. Go I got a heater on a hey truck. Hey, man, why are you pouring sugar in my pump? Don't worry about <laughs> it. 
So I got lit up with the heater. He said the pool will be at 90 degrees the way my family likes it back in Puerto Rico. It'll be warm water. I just stuck my, the heater's been on for, for 10 hours. Just stuck my finger in it. It's 73 degrees. Yeah, it's so, old. He's like, the pool's heated. I'm like, I don't know if it's running, buddy. Yeah. I love that, by the way, I knew something three years into it and then forgot it for 10 years until I got on Joe Rogan. And then all of a sudden I fucking remembered all this gems. It's fucking when I'm flying home from his podcast, I'm like, oh, I had the story that could have changed my life, and I didn't say it. <laughs> I and, had my machine. Yeah, yeah. Instead, I waited to do it on Hey Babe, and Sal wasn't even there. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> this is what I do now. Now I'm Chrissy intermittent fasting, but then I think <laughs> I think the glasses and the watch is from the fasting. So, uh, well, you just it's a full glow up. I, You're doing the body glow up too. Yeah, and Jazz, my girlfriend f- hates it. She's like, what the, you know, what Why the fuck? she hate it? Because she's like, you know, you, you glasses, the watch, the body. What the fuck are you doing? She doesn't I, like it. I was like, I'm trying to be healthy, babe. She wants to keep you fat. She wants to keep me fat. Wow. Yeah, she wants to keep me fat, and I told are her. You sure. <laughs> I don't, maybe not. Maybe she just doesn't want to put pressure on you. Yeah. She's well, worried if you're going crazy with all the watch and glasses <laughs> and the fat that you, you might snap. Well, she gets worried about me because I go, I go hard or go home. And she's like, <laughs> you, you, you go too fast with things. She goes, you go from zero to 100. And I just worry that you've lost all this weight in this good period, quick period of time. And I just worry that there's a, a you know, you go too hard and then something else happens. Because she reminded me, she's like, remember the last time you lost all this weight this quick? It was 2018. And I said, yeah. And she's like, and then remember all of 2019 you thought you were gay? <laughs> what the hell? Who's winning, by the way? You versus your sexuality. Uh, so far, right now it's right now it's me, but we are wavering. <laughs> Where uh, it's one of those things where when I hit forty, if I'm lucky enough to hit forty, there might just be a thing where I'm like, listen, I got to be honest with you. The most fun I've had. I don't know if, if you haven't seen the show. Please Google it. Season one of White Lotus. The, uh, did you see White Lotus? I've seen episode one. Okay, so the first season of White Lotus, the, the best character is this Australian gay guy. Yeah, and the, I'm like, the manager. That's the guy I <laughs> yeah. want to be. That's, that's the guy who's like, that, I love that guy. And it's like, what is that guy doing? He's just being gay. He's yeah. just having fun. <laughs> yep. You know, I'm like, and I, I found myself identifying with that guy. I was like, I don't know that I can eat a guy's ass over a table, which is one of the scenes. But I'm like, you know what, dude? I, can you, I can be gay without hooking up with a guy. Keep it, hit, right? Yeah, yeah. You look like a, like, what do people say you look like? Like, you almost look like, you know how, like, some humans, like, you can just tell they're, like, bred from, like, Neanderthal? That's who you are. Like a Cro-Magnum, just big fucking guy. Like, you're the guy who, in medieval times, you with an ax, I 100% would throw my wife and children in front of me and would say, kill them, because I'm so scared of you. I literally, I literally, you come at me with an ax, I'm on my knees, ready to suck everyone's cock. I'll, the chief thing, I'd be like, dude, fill up my stomach. I would not be able, dude, you're so big. How big is he? Can you stand up? I mean, are you tall too? Oh my God! Look at how big this guy is, dude! He's fucking terrified. He even put his toes away. His toes are like that. You're way too big. Dude, and with as tall, here's the thing. With as tall as you are and as big as you are, this is just the way God works. There's no way you have a high IQ. There's no fucking (laughs) shot at hell. You're not going on. She's like 100% right. He is. Oh, is he smart? Wait, what school does he go to? UNM? University of New Mexico, so not smart. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I didn't mind, I was just kidding around. You know I'm just fucking around. Here. You know I'm just fucking, you're not on a steroid cycle right now, right? You got rage? You don't have any rage? Okay. How happy were you, right, when he, right? Because when you saw him, I mean, you were like, yes. Because you look, are you Native American? You have a Native American look, you know what I mean? You're part Native American. <laughs> Many thanks. Many thanks. I know. It's what it is. You're like Sacagawea and he's John Smith. It's what it is. Give me your fucking smallpox. How old are you, dude? You're like 22. Just a young fucking kid, dude. Oh, I love it. You're like Wreck-It Ralph. I love it. Do you also go to... So, where you met her in New Mexico? Yeah. Nice, dude. But why are you here? What are you guys doing here? Uh, your brother's getting nice, dude. 
Are you going to eat one of the groomsmen? <laughs> for protein? <laughs> Do you play sports? Oh, football, yeah. Magic, yeah. I play chess. <laughs> oh, dude, good for you, man. Good. You gotta keep a beautiful couple. I love it. I love it. And diverse, right? Native American, white child. Good. You guys are like a fucking community college brochure. I love it. What are you, 6'5, 6'6? 6'5, oh, fuck. Yeah. I know, dude. There's gonna be a lot of guys going home and what? Guess his weight? 6'5, 240. What is it? 285? Oh my god! Dude, there are, I swear to god, 30% of the men in this room have a chubby. Just know that. There's 30, some of the guys, I see some of the guys are like this. <laughs> 286, 5, 285. Dude, you're so gifted. I hope you have a little dick. What's his problem? God has to give you, so, you're fucking smart. You go to the University of New Mexico, one of our top universities, where they teach you all about Breaking Bad and meth. Oh. Smart, got great hair. 65285, beautiful girlfriend. What's his problem? What's his flaw? You have to know, you're his girlfriend. How long have you guys been going out? Five years? What's his flaw? He's gotta have something. He's got a big dick then. Does he have a big dick? Pretty, wow, she just went like this. I feel like one of, like that, that's his dick. You know, like, like it's out. He's like, yeah, dude, I put, I have to put a shirt on my dick because it's so big, so. Wow, and you're a good football player too. What position do you play? Uh, um, yeah. Offensive tackles, you're good. Is New Mex University of Mexico Division I? Yeah. Oh wow, you might like go to the NFL and shit. Oh my God, dude, there's gotta be a flaw. What's, this, what's your full name? What's your, wait, what's your first name? Adam, and what's your last name? Gay. Adam Gay. There's your flaw. It always works. Adam Gay. Thank you. Good fucking night, sir. Good night. Happy Pride Month to you. Adam Gay. Adam. Nigga's last name. I guess it was his flaw was his last name. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's Chris, man. Yeah, he definitely did bomb that TV show. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what was, was that the view? Was that the view? I don't know what it was. It could have been some woman show, been. some wo morning woman show. Yeah, daytime TV show. Man. What was he doing on the show? <laughs> Why was he there? He said they invited him out. I wonder if that was before his special or after his special. You know? I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> and he said he just clicked it all to YouTube. <clears throat> Had a way to do it, man. You know what I mean? And then just go, yeah, I mean, it, it makes sense. I, I mean, they should take, uh, what was it, um, Norm? Well, not Norm, but um, what's his face? Mark Norman. Mark Norman? Yeah, whenever he goes on the, on the shows, he always, you know, makes them pretty wild. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, I mean, he's usually, see. like, it's usually just, you know, it's not like a woman's morning. It's like a news morning show when Mark Norman goes on. Right, right, right. But he always makes it like a comedy. You know what I mean? yeah. It's like outrageous. So and that, and that was, that's what Chris was saying. Chris was like, man, every time I got on after that, you know, I just made it like a like a late night special or something. You know, and that's kind of what these guys should do. They're comedians, you know what I mean? Like, what do you expect when you come on a daytime show to, you know? I would say you want to be the nigga from White Lotus. <laughs> <laughs> and the name is Armand. <laughs> the gay dude from White Lotus. Um, uh, oh, he said he want to be him without being gay. <laughs> yeah, he said. What he said? He could. Um, he said he lost all his weight, and his wife thought he was gay for a year, <laughs> or he thought he was gay yeah, for a year. He thought he was. Yeah. <laughs> what? 2019. He lost the weight in 2018. Uh, the whole 2019, he thought he was gay. Man. I think the first yeah. time we reacted to one of his stand-ups, we. we I think we thought that he was gay. <laughs> okay. okay. Apparently, I think yeah. he has a wife and kids. Yeah. So. Never. Never. <laughs> I don't know why he would think he was gay. <laughs> you know, the things people go through. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, funny dude, man. Yeah. 